تلویزیون بهار تلویزیون مردمی که شامل برنامه های هنری، فرهنگی، اجتماعی، سیاسی، ورزشی و موضوعات داخل روز می باشد پس تلویزیون بهار را دنبال کنید بهار تلویزیون دیوالی او پیوستون ریختین غرق Thanks to all of them. The exhibition speaks to many different audiences. It speaks, of course, to regional experts on and anyone interested in Central Asia, Afghanistan, and India. This is also a rich contribution to visual ethnography more generally. And then last but not least, it is of great interest, I believe, to the Danish Afghan community. And I would like to offer a special welcome to all of you from this community today. Kabul to Kolkata of belonging memories and identity. And a very special welcome to Mosca Najib, the artist behind this uh, exhibition. Okay, well, thank you so much. Um, Salam ba matanoimon. I'm just going to say in Farsi uh, to, to all of you for being here today. Um, and thank you for, for um, the University of Copenhagen along with um, all the different partners for hosting and bringing this exhibition to light and um, helping us introduce another chapter um, on, on, on this amazing um, work that has taken more than five years to bring to life. Um, I am very excited to be here because um, when Dr. Vera asked me to give a give a bit of an um, explanation as to why I even decided to do this exhibition. It brought me back to my student years when, um, when I actually came across um, an Egyptian writer, famous writer's um, novel on, on Narib Mahfouz on the other. And I think there is that connection today on, on us versus them. And I think um, for many years in my life, I've just been always dwelling on that subject of us versus them and what that really means. Um, it was in 2012, I was um, a journalist, um, a producer in a news organization when um, I really experienced that other side of, of what it means to be Afghan, but report on your country from the outside borders. Um, and I think that was the, the starting point for when I thought we really need to change the narrative of how we document and tell the story of our people. Um, I don't know if you remember, but in end of Feb 2012, um, there was an incident in the Bahram Air, Air Base where um, a bunch of US soldiers unfortunately were, had burnt um, the Quran books and massive protests had started. And the way that news kind of spread across, it created a lot of divisions between who we were and who the others were and what, what this Western power was looking down on us. Um, at the same time, in parallel, um, I've lived in, in India for more than two decades and I was always um, experiencing Afghanistan in a very soft and in a very vulnerable way through the story of Tagore and Kabuliwala. Um, Afghanistan in the recent modern times has produced a um, cache of memorable images um, that encapsulates the life of Afghans amidst war and conflict. And the purpose of this exhibition essentially was to shift that discourse and to give light to a very different way of us, um, that we have a very rich culture, we have a massive history, um, and we have a very colorful, what you'll experience in the 30 images that are being um, put um, and exhibited here um, 
a colorful um, light in, in, in the faces of the people that, that you will encounter. I won't dwell too much on the story of the Kabuliwala because um, we've shared it, but it is true. Um, the Kabuliwala, if you read it, although it's a very short story, um, it talks about suspicion, it talks about stereotyping, it talks about um, the other and the character of violence. Um, and I wanted to demystify that. Um, so the 21st century Kabuliwalas is what you get to experience today. And these are men who have been away from their country, who are second and third generation Afghans, um, who believe in the idea of or notion of a homeland that they have never experienced, but they have heard and thought. And I think for Afghans like us who are uprooted um, and away from our homeland, we experience that day in and day out. Um, the Pashtun merchant in Tagore's story does become friend with a little um, girl called Mimi. And it is true that the story ends with him coming back and realizing that in 20, 30 years, he has lost sight of seeing his own daughter grow, um, grow old. Um, and, and Minnie is that connection to, to his own personal life. But I think what's really interesting in Tagore's story as well is the fact that um, it shows a very different side of how back in the day our roots were very borderless. We could travel to different places and exchange cultures through um, just a sack of bags selling dry fruits and hing and a ton of different, um, you know, textiles and etc. That is still maintained in the 21st century Kabuliwalas when we experienced them in, in the year 2013 when we went to document um, their story. Um, what was interesting for us was that this is possibly the oldest settled Afghan community in the subcontinent in modern times. Um, however, they have not been really documented. They've always remained a very fictional character. Um, it's just been Tagore's story. And um, what we wanted to do was to bring Tagore's story to life by actually reminding Afghans, but also people, outsiders, the others, that there actually is a community who is continuing to live and breathe and it's not fictional. Um, when we actually went to, to document their journey, it was a three-year experience going back. And as an Afghan woman entering the world of the Afghan men, it was, it was a huge challenge. Why I became the suspect and the suspicion, why was an Afghan girl documenting men? And um, it took me two years to, to, to pierce through their trust and be able to um, allow them. But in that time, I still, as an Afghan woman, was not allowed to document the women. Um, so when you experience the photographs today, there is an absence of women. And I think that speaks a lot of, of the, the issue of trust and the issue of vulnerability that we continue to, to experience in, in our culture. Um, there's about 5,000 families that live in Kolkata. Um, of first, second, and third generation. And they've really managed to preserve their identity and their way of life um, when you enter their homeland. Um, I call it homeland because it really feels like you're sitting in Kandahar in a house or in Logar or in one of the provinces in Afghanistan. You do not feel that this is Kolkata. In fact, all these photographs that have traveled to different places, um, most Afghans have said, oh, but I thought you have never gone back to Afghanistan. When did you go? Um, and I often tell them, no, this is, this is Calcutta. Um, this is how well this community of over 100 years have managed to retain their traits and their roots. Um, I got very interested in this story because I've been uprooted as well at a very young age. I left Afghanistan when I was eight years old and um, I was always in conflict with my identity. Um, I felt the geographical distance had shaped who I was um, by being in an, in an outside world, but I didn't identify with that. And through the Kabuliwalas, I wanted to experience what the meaning of identity me meant. Um, what mean 
the meaning of dislocation meant. Um, so this photographic journey really has been an experience of vulnerability. I think that is a beautiful word you've used. I've never used it in the previous chapters. Um, but it's also about trying to look beyond the superficial level of day-to-day -day trade. Um, yes, these gentlemen still trade and they, you know, um, continue with their commodity trading. But beyond that, um, there is this dichotomy of living between two worlds. The world of the dream of Pashtunistan and this land that their forefathers came from that they've never been through, and then the reality through which they watch in a, in a small little TV screen and they hear the news on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, none of the Afghan community of the Kabuliwala um, have an actual passport or a status in, a, in India, so they can't go back to Afghanistan. So the image of Afghanistan, when you talk to them, is very different. It's the image that they have heard over generations. Um, the third and fourth generation Afghans are already very Indianized. Um, their sons play. So when you go and see the photographs, there's a photograph what what we call father and son. And you'll see the son wearing the cricket um, attire and dress. And he looks very Indian. And his father wearing the traditional shalwar kameez. And he's sitting, you know, as the, the, the sort of the grown up in the family. Um, when I asked his son, did he feel more Indian or did he feel more Pashtun? He said, when I step outside the door, I am Indian. When I enter, I only speak Pashto. And I think that is the interesting part of how they've managed to, to coexist in this dual identity. Um, in terms of business uh, ventures, they mostly used to, you know, do dry fruit hawking, um, asafit uh, hing, um, but now they've also diversified their businesses into um, clothing. You see a lot of tailoring shops come for Afghan weddings um, and Indian weddings. Um, many have married into um, the Muslim Indian women communities, so their women actually speak Bengali. At home they speak Bengali, the women don't speak Pashto. So it's a, it's a concoction and a mix of these different cultures um, coming together. Bahar Television, the Awali, our Paiwastun, the Hinayak.